So we thank always our Heavenly Father for His blessing, we thank Him for His love, and we thank Him about everything that He gathered all of us this beautiful day in His house to be able to worship Him, to be able to offer thanks to Him, and to be able to participate as brothers and sisters in the prayer and then to receive His body and His blood. We thank Him always because His mercy is always upon us. And we thank Him because when He made us, He made and created us on His image and likeness, which is He made us something very unique. A lot of people among us here, they work in jewelry. And imagine if you want to make a piece of jewelry, to somebody is very dear to your heart or somebody whom you love the most I think you will work very hard to make the best and the very unique decoration or design in order to make that person happy when you give him this gift but God when he created us he didn't make us something very beautiful but he made us like him. So he put all the images of the perfection in us because he is perfect. So he didn't make us beautiful or very beautiful, but he made us, so he made us like equal in him, which is he made us on his image and likeness. So that's why every and each one of us is very unique. And if we just always remember that we are the image of God, I think whatever we will do in our life, we'll do it differently. Whatever we think to make something not good, we will maybe, like we said, count to ten before we make it. Because we will corrupt that beautiful image. And I think all that it has to do with the faithfulness or loyalty. Because I think if anybody is faithful to one whom he loves, he will always try to do the best for that person, to make him happy and to give him the best thing ever. And like the Bible said, we were reading at the beginning of the liturgy, that God, when he was talking, God, Jesus, when he was talking with his disciples, he said something very, very important. He said, he who is faithful in what is less is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is less is unjust also in much. So faithfulness is something God is asking us to keep in our life to be always faithful, so we will be able to look like him, to be like the original image that God, when he created us, created us perfect like him. I think Adam and Eve, they were not faithful to God's commandment. That's why they corrected that image and they being departed from paradise, from heaven. And until now, a lot of people they feel very heavy burden over their shoulder because of the sin that they make, because they don't follow what the Bible says, because they are not faithful to their relationship with God. So that's why God is telling us, who is faithful and what is less? What does that mean? Actually, the less or the little, which means what we have. It doesn't matter, maybe it has a time, that we have financial position, uh, any kind of uh, degree we have, all this is little compared with the everlasting life. So that's why 
Jesus, he said here, if you cannot be faithful to these issues that is temporary, that one day you will lose, how come you would be able to be faithful to what God gave you on the cross when he laid himself on the cross and gave you the eternal life? So that's why when somebody is faithful to what he has in his hand, he would be faithful spiritually to his life. One of the very actually important figure in the Old Testament is named Joseph. We all know Joseph. The story of Joseph is a very depressing story, especially at the very beginning. He was a very little child, he had done nothing. He was very happy with his 12 brothers and sisters. But then, one time, his brothers, they saw that their father, which is Jacob or Israel, he loved him kind of more than the rest of his brothers. So they began to think how to kill him. So they were very jealous of him. So they decided one day that while they were taking off their ships in the wilderness, he was taking a food for them. So they saw him from distance, they said to each other, why we not kill him here? But one of the brothers, he said, if we kill him, this is really big sin. And he's our brother. Why we don't throw him in a well? It was with an old well, there was no water. So we we'll threw him there and let him die slowly. And then another one, which is Judah, one of the 12 tribes of Israel, one of the 12 sons of uh, Jacob. He said, instead, why we don't sell him? There is a big uh, uh, crowd going like a trade to Egypt. Why we don't sell him? So we don't actually kill him or throw him somewhere else. And on top of that, we receive money. So finally, they decide to sell him. They sold him. And when he was in Egypt, he was a slave, of course. And a lot of time we watch in TV, the slavery in the old days, it was very bad. Because your master, he can do whatever, and even the law cannot tell him what you do and why you do in your slave. So they sold him to one big man in Egypt, and he was very faithful. That's the very important characterized in Joseph's life, in Joseph's character. So he was working in his master's home, but his wife, the master's wife, she loved him. Because the Bible said that he was very good looking. So she tried to do, to do something bad with him. When he saw that, he ran away out, naked. And then, later on, she began to scream, saying that he want to do something bad with me. Of course, everybody, they will believe her, because she is uh, the wife of the master. And nobody will believe the slave. And then they took him and they threw him in jail. And then he spent maybe 13 years in jail. Imagine that you have done nothing, but because you are so faithful to your faith, to your God, you receive this punishment. And a lot of story happened to him in jail. And always the Bible say about Joseph that he was faithful to God. He never forgave that he has to please God more than anybody else. So the faithfulness is how to please God by your action and how to please God in your heart when you devote more time, more effort, more love to Him in your life. But the Bible says something very important and we can see how when somebody is actually loyal, somebody faithful, honest to God, even he is looked like as a slave, but he is actually a free man. When she wants his master's wife, she wants to do something bad with him, the Bible says she looked down to him, which means he was always up and she was always down. So what I want to say, even he was, or he appeared among people as a slave, 
but inside he was very loyal, very faithful, because he knows very well the perfect image that God created him on. Unlike the wife of Potiphar, which is the uh, master's wife, she was actually slave from inside because she was not a faithful person to God. So I think when we read all these uh, stories, most of the people, figures in the Bible, uh, Moses, Jeremiah, all the figures, they were very faithful to God. That's, what, that's why God made them who are they, and now we honor them. One time I heard from one of the fathers when I was in Egypt, his very spiritual father, he was a long time in the wilderness. He said, Abuna, you can be greater than Paul, and we know who is Paul in the uh, Bible. He's the one who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. He's the one, if people, they heard about him, they brought their clothes, even if Paul's shadow go over the clothes, they used to take it to the sick people and they get help. So he told me, Abuna, if you want to be greater than Paul, you need only to be faithful and loyal to God. Because this is what made Paul. He is actually honesty to God, because he was very faithful to God. In this life, unfortunately, the life we live in, if somebody is faithful, they make fun of him. They say he is so naive. He doesn't know. So if you cheat, if you be dishonest in your work, if you know how to manage your life, even in a tricky ways, they will call you smart. But if you are so faithful in your work, with yourself, with your family, with your friends and society, people maybe they will say that you are naive, which is, you don't know what's going on in this life. But let me tell you something very important. I wish when you go back home today, you open your Bible in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 10. And read really this verse. The one thing that will make you go to heaven is faithfulness. The Bible said, it said, be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. Not only life, the crown of life, the best life. So I think if we want to go to heaven, we need to be faithful because faithfulness is required. Otherwise, we won't be able to see the kingdom of God. So I encourage, encourage you, dear brothers and sisters, please, don't say that my wife is not here with me, I can do whatever, I can cheat. Don't say that nobody see me when you prepare something in your job and you work, nobody, I can go around, I can cheat. Don't say that who cares about my spiritual life. When I will get old, I will go to the church, then I will repent. Not knowing that you cannot guarantee even one single second from your life. So what does that mean? If you are faithful in your life with God, with yourself, in your work, with others, one day God will provide you the crown of life. Who does not want that the crown one day? Who does not want actually one day God to call him, to call him come O faithful servant? So God is calling us today to understand that being not faithful, not loyal person, not honest person in this life, sometimes it will make you comfortable in this life and people will praise you. But at the end, you have to understand, you need to please God. You don't need to please people. You need one day to hear His voice telling you, come, O oh, faithful servant to me, and I will put you in charge of my kingdom. You don't want to hear His voice, go, unfaithful servant. So I think God is calling us today, this morning, how to be faithful to Him, 
and how to be faithful to ourselves when we wake up morning sometimes we are late to our work or tired and we just want to run into the work we forget to give God five minutes to sit with Him, to thank Him, to ask Him to bless us in this day and to give us good company and good people. This is unfaithfulness. When you don't come to the church on Sunday because you put just excuse, you make whatever reason not to come to the church, this is unfaithfulness. When you have your Bible not being opened for last, I don't know, maybe two, three months or two, three years, this is also unfaithfulness. Please, let's wake up and ask God before the time will finish. Because one time, what God will ask you in order to take you to heaven or not, were you faithful in your life before the time ran out? I ask you all, dear brothers and sisters, to ask God to encourage you by the power of the Holy Spirit to listen to Him and also to open your heart and to be loyal to Him and to make Him your King and your Master. He's the only one who can help you and grant you the eternal life. May God bless you all in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We have uh, some announcement and after that we will do